What's shaking, guys? My name is Luke Dancy, and welcome to another live. This is not a live hangout. I'm just going to say that right away. This is a live Q and A with someone that I have been friends with now for a while, and I've looked up to even longer. His magic is always so out of the box. It's so different. It's wild. It's crazy. It's fun. There can only be one person to check off each and every one of those boxes. I'm talking about Mr. Kieran Johnson. I've got Kieran live with me today for you. This is a very special thing that we were planning on doing. Uh, didn't have a lot of uh, time to tell you about it because it literally happened over the weekend. He's about to go to Blackpool to debut his brand new effect, Ice Cube, which, believe it or not, is actually released today. It's available now. We've had it on pre sold It's now available from your favorite dealer. And so I thought, you know, it's going to be great to have Kieran on to answer some of your questions about this brand new release because a lot of people have said, this is too perfect. This is too good to be true. And so we wanted to come on and give you a chance to find out exactly what this is about and to let you know it's not too good to be true, even though you think it is, all right? So first up, I'm going to show you the trailer for Ice Cube, and then we're going to come back and answer all your questions live that you have about this, and I'm going to ask him a few other questions as well. So stay tuned for that, but up first, here comes the trailer for Ice Cube. If you haven't seen it yet, this is what a lot of people are calling the holy grail of ice magic. This is intense, this is good stuff, and this is real TV magic for the real world. Check it out, guys. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kieran Johnson. For the last five years, I've been looking for what I would consider the perfect ice effect. I wanted to be able to take an object, a ring or a coin, and have it in the ice, really in there, and be able to fully display it, all sides, all the way around, from the sides to the bottom, all the way around, I wanted to be able to show this ice right in front of their faces as close as they could be. And I wanted to be able to store it. I wanted to be able to travel to hot countries. I, I wanted to be travel six hours to a gig. I was looking for the impossible. And with the help of Mark Tramassoni, in the last few years, we have finally done it. No duplicates. It's really in there. This is impossible magic at its best. This is Ice Cube. Alright guys, and we are back and we are going to have Kieran here with me in just a moment. We are pulling up his feed and we, are, we will have him here live to answer your questions. As you saw from the trailer, um, you know, as I said before, this is what a lot of people call TV magic for the real world because this is so impossible. I think Kieran's had some of his work done by people on um, Britain's Got Talent. I'm thinking America's Got Talent I'm here in the States. Uh, but a lot of places... Um, that uh, you've seen on TV. And so this, again, is basically the type of magic you would see um, in a TV setting, but for the real world. And I have Kieran here with me now. So, Kieran. Hello. Welcome to the show, my friend. How the heck are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Luke. It's always a pleasure to uh, be talking to you. Well, it's good to talk to you too, my friend. And thank you for spending some time with me. I know you're about to head off to... Blackpool. I know it's the biggest magic convention in the world. Which happens to be in Blackpool of all places. <laughs> I don't understand it, but it's a pretty great convention. Lots of amazing people uh, and lots of uh, lots of fun in the Ruskin and lots of sessioning. It, it yeah. is a it's a great convention. So let's back up a minute with Ice Cube. Uh, we saw the trailer just a moment yep. ago. We now know that it's an impossible object to a truly impossible location. What was your original idea? Why did you come up with something like this? And what I, I know we've talked uh, about stuff before, Kieran, but like your mind works in a way that a lot of people would just never understand. And you can see it in your magic. Um, <laughs> so Ice Cube, let's give us the early beginnings and then we'll get more of the live questions. People asking the specifics and I have a couple questions too, so I'll let you do a little background on Ice Cube. 
Okay, so uh, about five years ago, I released an effect called To The Max, uh, which is obviously my homage to Max Molini, which was, if you you may, uh, I redid it as Element back in 2015, which came with a nicer holder and worked better in hotter countries. Um, but I've always been fascinated by liquid and ice and I guess the thing is, when I first set out, when I started playing with ice, I, I was reading, I, I did a lot of research, and I wanted an object in ice, and I couldn't really find anyone that there was, it didn't exist. The other thing that didn't exist, you couldn't travel with it, so I, I kind of focused on, I was focusing on the object in ice, then I get, then I'm focused on traveling, and then I focused on just making it work, and then I went with the flash paper version. But in the back of my mind, all, all these years, I've always wanted to do this that's why i wanted i wanted to be able to put a coin in ice in real time so uh, over, over the last five years i've had like probably about 40 prototypes made and designed which i've designed i've also had fabricated um and and i probably spent more money on it getting it to be designed than i than it ever will make but um it's it's been a, a passion of love and what's the, the i think the heart the, the the weirdest thing is actually the method for this i came back up in the early days but it wasn't to let it run so i started playing around with it again that i went back to that method mm. um because it, it took mark travis only to uh he, he played with a new concept with a mold and i liked that and then i realized i could apply my idea to that again um and and i guess what i wanted is i wanted a block of ice that I could show all the way around, that can, you know, be held in the spectator's hand, put in a bag, show it again, have them break it open, and have it in there. And I guess the thing is, um, what I was looking for was impossible, and I eventually found it. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I kind of feel sad in a way. I said to my wife this morning, I went, I feel sad because. I, will this be my last ice release now? Like, because obviously I've done. This is my. I think technically it's my fourth, and I've always loved this concept. But I'm, I'm thinking maybe I've um, I, I've d done myself out of a job now, uh, with, which is great. But um, it's been such a journey to get to get to this point to to do this. And I think out of all the pieces of magic I've ever released, this is the probably the the, the most um, PMs I've had about people saying it's not true, which is weird because I've I've done some weird stuff with tea and cans and I never got that. But with this particular piece, I think people just have been a bit like too impossible, hmm. not possible, not practical. And I think right. you know, I, I I guess I specialize in making things that shouldn't be practical practical. <laughs> You're good at that. <laughs> yes, you are. You're very yeah, good at that. It's my thing, isn't it? Um, and I because I, I, I you know we talked about this before, but. Um, I believe there's no effort for magic. I mean, I know obviously magic that's easier to do and more accessible, like, like card tricks or coin tricks or some really great stuff to, out there. Um, but what I want is I want to do the magic, and I want to people to do the magic that they're not expecting. You know, if you're in a bar with someone for 40 minutes, you've done some great stuff, and you say, "Look, boom, borrow a coin, do a few things." Now you produce a block of ice, and they they, they they're probably going one. Where's the ice come from? Because that's the strongest bit of it. They're like, what? You should get a crazy reaction just for the ice. And then he's oh, saying, yeah. look, break it open. <laughs> and, and then inside is their object. That's just, they just look at you like you're an alien. Yep. Um, <laughs> and the great, the great thing is, and I keep saying this, but the great thing is it, it shouldn't be. By the laws of physics and the laws of magic, this shouldn't be practical. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes wonder if somehow when I die it won't work anymore that somehow i'm doing something to change the laws but it is that and that, that's the hardest thing like when you're trying to tell people this is practical magic that shouldn't be practical yep so and i think the worst thing about it is it's easy like i always say that it is really easy you, i mean if you were really if you if you wanted to you could just put the coin in the bag and then it's done you know, if you if you if that was your thing, I mean, obviously it wouldn't be as good. It's better if you do some magic with it. But you could do that. You could place the coin in the bag, and say, "Watch one, two, three, boom!" Pull it out, block of ice. Have them break it open. It's in there. That's how easy it is, really. So I have a couple questions, Kieran, that have been coming yeah. in. Uh, They've been coming in live, and you guys watching on YouTube and Facebook, feel free to get those questions in for us. I'm seeing them come in, and I'm going to make sure right now to grab some. I'm actually going to pull up my feed uh, from. 
Uh, probably Facebook here. One of the really popular questions is, uh, Kieran, and I'm just going to pull this up real quick, is from Facebook. I think it was David Brock. Uh, David Brock, can you do this with the folded card? One of the most popular questions, Kieran, before you answer that, hold on a sec, um, is can you do this not just with the folded card, but with other objects too, smaller objects? And I know that's why I wanted to cut you off there because I know that the folded card is a simple answer, yes or no. But can you also do this with things that are not just uh, a folded card or other things, but like what other types of things can you put in the ice and reveal? So there you go. So this is the interesting thing um, that I, I, I'm fascinated by the concept is the size of the ice at the moment and, and the way it's designed is to do a ring or a coin. Um, theoretically, yes, you could do the, a folded card with it. You would have to make it a lot bigger. So it might that would be something to think about. Uh, I do have another version called uh, Remaxed, which is designed for cards specifically, but doesn't have the same solution. And you, It's still amazing, but it's not sealed. It is amazing. I use it. But it's not. It's not this. This. This is. You know. This is crazy. Theoretically, if you were to make it big enough, once you know the method, you could load a mobile phone in there. Um, <laughs> but 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 the size of the ice would be um, would have to be a lot huge. So theoretically, you could use those concepts to expand. First of all, like you know, I like doing a sand card in ice or a, a, a card in ice, but. I, I personally think that's kind of a waste for this concept, and I hope I haven't offended anyone because I do Remax, which is my sign card and ice, which I love. Mm. But the, the, when you borrow someone's ring or you borrow a coin and you have it signed and you 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 do this, the, I don't know. This is something different, especially if you do it with a ring. Give me a ring, ring vanishes. Uh, you know, J John Allen was chatting to me the other day, and he was talking about an idea he had for it, which was you um, you uh, borrow uh, a ring. You vanish it. You have a ring box on the table. You ask them to open it. There's nothing in there, uh, but a piece of paper. You do the element production. So you flash produce the ice. It's now ice, and then you can show it and break it open gently, obviously, because you don't want to be hard. Then you can have the ring in there. So there's there's lots of ideas with it. But yeah, theoretically, you could put other objects in there. But okay. you'd have to think about how your ice would have to be a lot bigger. Okay. Very good. Um, and another popular question, Kieran, uh, I think this one came from YouTube. Let me just pull up my YouTube feed real quick. Uh, a very popular question, and this one has been asked a few times by this person, so I want to make sure that I don't forget it here. <laughs> uh, this one is from, uh, a, a, we'll just call him Mr. Gore. Uh, I can't pronounce his first name, Athar Vagore. Are we supposed to carry ice cubes in our pockets, and what if they melt? Not good. Now, I, I, know, I know what's going on here, but it's like, People are asking, well, ice cube, you have to carry this and it melts. So I know there's a lot more to this, Kieran, and I, I just want to make sure that yeah. you know that I know. But for the friends yeah. that don't know about what's going on, and, and as a worker that does work in all sorts of environments and climates, yeah. I'll let you run with the answer there. But uh, good question there, Mr. Gore. Yeah, no, it's a great question because really, let's think about it. It's an insane idea that, uh, let me put some light on. That there's, practically, this shouldn't be a practical trick, right? I go to a gig. I can't walk around with ice. It's going <laughs> to melt in my pocket. You're thinking that, right? You're thinking, mm -hmm. no way. It's going to melt in my pocket. So imagine how a person thinks when you do it. Now, just know this, that it is possible. Using the concept I've been developing for the last five years, I could walk around. I could leave my house, pack my ice up in my bag, travel 10 hours, get to the gig, wait half an hour, have a drink, set myself up, walk around, wait an hour, and then I can do this trick. And I know that sounds insane, but I can because I... Every, everything I've, I, I put, me and Mark have worked so hard into to travel, into preparation. It comes with everything you need. Pretty much, if you were to get this, you could put it in your freezer, uh, set it for five, six hours, depending on how good your freezer is, take it out, set it all up, walk to the shop, perform it for someone. It's that. It's simple. You know, The hardest thing is probably freezing the ice. But the, everything's been thought out for you. So obviously, if you live in a hot country like, say, Texas, you're not going to have as long. You, you still will be able to travel uh, with a cool bag for eight, nine hours quite easily in Texas. Um, right. But you probably have about 40 minutes. Um, and the way it's designed is in the bag. It, it, it's, it's in a nice plastic insulated bag. And then we've got a, a fabric, which I've developed and worked on for many years, that absorbs the ice. So as much as it sounds impossible, um, it isn't. And, uh, you know, I... I
I, 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 when I think about myself, when I first started the journey with the ice, there's been so many ice effects published. Um, the first was published in 1936 in the Jinx uh, by Fyodor Anemann. He was the first to place put card in ice. And obviously, Michael Marr did some wonderful work, and Neff Kesh has done some wonderful work, and Luke Jumet had some great ideas. But the one thing that they never did was figure out how to travel with the ice. Because these were competition pieces or parlor pieces, right, right, right. And I've I've literally spent the last five years of my life. Hopefully, I've not been too over confident with it, but I spent five years of my life, well, longer, seven, eight years, just trying to figure out how to travel with it. Mm-hmm. I I can tell you this. I do. Um, I work a lot, and and you know that that shouldn't inflict whether that's a good trick or not, because working a lot does not mean anything really. But I can say this: a, a good testament to my work is I was at the session this year, there's 400 magicians, some of the best in the world. Uh, when I did my lecture, I put up who uses the ice, pretty much 70% of the room put their hands up. Because, and, and so when you think about it, there's magicians all over this country in England and, and, and America and other places uh, doing it. I, I know that um, there's a really good magician called um, uh, Jamie in Swiss. He actually was mad at me when I told him I was doing another ice trick because he doesn't want anyone to know about it because <laughs> he says no pros do it because it's his secret. Yeah. Um, so, because this is the other thing is that, you know, as much as I want everyone to get this, 90, about 80% of you won't because you just, you know, it, it might not suit you because you shouldn't buy it if it doesn't suit you. Also, it is a lot of work. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, you do have to make ice every time you want to do this. This isn't. Uh, are repeatable you know it is it is repeatable if you put the work in so a lot of people say to me oh do you just do this at one one set gig now i i walk around the table and i do this 10 times in the evening and if i'm traveling to several gigs i'll do it multiple times mm-hmm. um and i have a friend in dubai he uses these concepts and he does it once on the beach and he waits about an hour and then he busts it out and they just stare at him you know so it, it it's you know a is lot that, a lot it, of thought is that Christopher Whitelock by any chance? Because he's watching live yeah, on Facebook right now. He yeah, that to, is yeah. Christopher. We- that is. Cool. He's there. He's listening. Yeah. So, you know, cool. he, he, you ask him some questions if he's online. Um, he'll tell you about it. He probably hates me talking about it because, um, <laughs> because he, again, he loves it. He's probably going, no, Karen, don't, don't invent more ice magic. I don't want him to do it. And, and that, as much as I've had the, this is impossible, I've also had a lot of angry messages saying, Karen, why are you making this cheap, Karen? Don't tell them. And, mm. and I know, obviously, that people always read that and go, oh, you must be your friends. But I think um, one of the things I've always done, uh, anyone that writes to me, I always write back to them. If you know me from my Penguin lecture, you'll know that. Or if you know me, um, people write to me all the time asking me questions, and I'm always happy to help or just chat, you know. Uh, it, you know the, the other thing is, when I'm traveling, it's a little bit harder. Um, but I always try and get back to people. With, with the magic. So I I really believe in what I'm doing, but I also know that it's as unpractical as it sounds, it, it works. And mm-hmm. and really, when you think about it, it shouldn't even be theoretically possible. But because I've pretty much like spent my life developing this, uh, it's probably why I've gone insane. <laughs> well, that's actually, I'm glad that question came up about, you know, yeah. people worrying about that type of stuff, melting in the pocket or whatever, yeah. because in, in my opinion, and based on what you just said, it really does make the effect that much stronger because they're like, how the hell can you carry that around to do this when the ice should yeah. technically melt anyway? So from a method standpoint alone, it's just golden. You know what I mean? It, it could stump. Mm. It, I mean, if it's stumping magicians, what do you think about your your layman out there? So there you go. <laughs> exactly. And if you know elements or to the max, then you'll know uh, if you read the reviews on just the basic ice production, people will go, this shouldn't work. Yeah. This shouldn't work. The gimmick doesn't even look... At- you know, the, especially the original, they're like, "How? No, that's not going to work." And then, then they, then they go, "This does work." I think the first review I ever got was this guy went, "I opened up the box of T D Max, and I was so disappointed, and I thought there's no way it's going to work." Then I couldn't sleep, so I got up, and then I decided to walk around the house, and then I decided to do some painting and some decorating in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. And he says, three hours later, the ice is still there, and he's like, "How is this possible? It, it, it doesn't look like much." But and then obviously from there, I built concept and I, i've got better mm. uh, making things last longer you know right. um like anything with a mobile phone it gets hopefully got better got better here's a uh question kieran from facebook i'm just going to pull this up real quick um yeah 
Facebook question from Tommy Bennett. Uh, Tom is asking, or Tom, excuse me, not Tommy. Uh, he said in the other Q&A video, uh, the guy mentioned that before it is smashed, you can't really see the coin very well because the ice is quite cloudy. If you boiled yeah. the water before you froze it, would that fix the problem? If you were to boil it... Yeah, I mean, it's difficult because this is the thing. I, I haven't really put anything on the video, you, you, even on the on when you buy it with clearing yes if you were to boil it you could, it would be clear but the problem is is there's no reason to break it open there's no suspense one of the things i've learned from uh this kind of magic is it has to have a suspense otherwise it's just oh it's in there mm -hmm. and i know that sounds stupid but like i do remaxed and i've been doing it for years but when i folded the card and put it in the remaxed i got a better reaction at the end than I did at the start. So it, even though, you know, it, it depends on what you were going for. But personally, my advice would be always have it cloudy because it builds better. Um, but, you know, one of the things I will say is it doesn't mean I'm right. Um, you could take this and you could do it that way. You go, this is much better for me. So I think as, as a magician, you should always try and be an artist with other people's work anyway. You should always try and make it your own, whether it's a patter or, you know. So personally, I don't think it, it makes it better. I think it makes it worse. But a lot of magicians seem to think so. But I, I just know from, as a working standard point, uh, you've got to build suspense. Because yeah. I will say this, I always ask them, do you think it's in there? And they always go, no. No, <laughs> it's not in there. And they go, why is it not in there? Went, because it's not possible. Yep. <laughs> and they go, break it open. And then they scream. Because they're like, that's not possible. <laughs> and it, on the video, you'll see me. I go, do you believe it's in there? No. And I just did card and ice a minute ago. And I asked him the same thing. And she goes, no. <laughs> no. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Mark uh, can tell you the same. They always say, no, it's not possible. Here's a question about something being possible or impossible. Kieran, this one comes in from Facebook. Uh, this comes in from my friend New Dimension. And he's asking... Um, can the spectator hold the ice and pass around? So once you have the revelation that something's on the ice, can they actually hold the ice? Yeah, of course, because you put you pour the ice into the hand. I don't think we just showed that in the trailer. But the first thing I do is I pour the ice into the hands. Um, personally, I would never get them to pass it around because it, it, it's not that exciting, if you know, at the moment. It, 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 you get that first reaction. Um, and, and they might pass it to their friend. But really what you want to do in, in terms of a framing thing, the reason we place it into the bag is so you can frame it and then you can get them to hold it. And they can just get a – one, it's not dripping water everywhere, and the other, it just frames it better. But, yeah, you could, but it'd okay. just be messy. Okay. It'd be messy. So that explains the bag. So the bag is not part of the method no, necessarily. No, the, the, yeah. the bag's not part of the method. Okay. No. So, I mean, it, it, it adds uh, extra bits to it, but the, 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 the bag itself – Okay. You could give it to someone, and they could break it open there and then. But again, the I, the reason the bag exists is because again, I've learned from working that it's better to frame the ice. So even with right. Remax now, I put Remax in the bag because it frames it better. Okay. Uh, I have another question. This one comes in from Facebook. This is more of a generic question, Kieran. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Shabazz saying, "Hey, look, I was speaking to Kieran on Facebook." couple months ago asking him about the idea to make a signed coin appear nice ask him if he remembers me this is shabazz yes i remember he, 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 i think a lot of people are always asking me um i think when i did my penguin lecture i um that people were always uh, been asking me this question for a long time um and and it's something i've been working on for a long time really so mm -hmm. many years many many prototypes all right uh this is an interesting question from uh, YouTube that I'm going to pop up. This YouTube question uh, comes in from my buddy uh, Marielle. Uh, is it possible to put the ice in someone's water and then use that as a reveal? So basically, if you were to kind of like maybe use the water as in like someone's glass or maybe a bowl or something, can you secretly get the ice in there and then have it appear, you know, secretly? Like yeah, that? yeah, you could, but my, my, my thing is like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend they drink it afterwards just because of hygiene and stuff like that. Okay. So obviously you'd have to think about their drink. Uh, but yeah, there'd be no reason why you couldn't do that. But from a hygiene stand standpoint, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. Um, the, okay. Had a, another question. I can't remember who it was from. I'm, I'm trying to scroll up here. Oh, here we go. Uh, Atharva Gore asks over on YouTube, 
what inspires you for your creative process? And that's a good thing to answer because it also gives us a, more of an you know understanding of how you create in general. And this will, of course, go into Ice Cube as well. So uh, you know, we've talked about this before, Kieran. But for the rest of the guys that don't know, yeah. maybe give um, us a little peek into your mind there. That'd be cool. It, it's kind of an obsessive thing with me because obviously with this particular effect, this has been an on and off affair for years. You know, if you look at my first works, Tina Max have a sign coin in ice, uh, similar to Neff Cash's. Um, but yeah, my, I don't. I think it's hard, like process. I kind of just go with it. So sometimes tricks will come fully formed. So I know, I, like I, I've been working on this effect with sugar. I knew straight away in my head that the idea worked, and I went and performed it. It worked, and I had this other idea with magnets and coins, and it worked. And then ideas like this, sometimes they. They, they, you, you, you come back to it, you go away, you come back, you go away. You know, this has been an on and off affair. This particular concept has been an on and off affair for many years. Like, you know, I come back, I go off. I think for me, what really got me back into it is talking about it on Penguin, but also Mark going on about it. This, this is, I can go off on the tangent with creative process, but I think mainly one of the things I do when I'm creating the process is I stick with it. Even even if I'm struggling, I, 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 I never give up on that idea, even if it takes five years of my life. <laughs> Fair like enough. My, yeah. my, my too hot to handle routine uh, with the can and the tea, that took me seven years to write that routine. Unbelievable. Seven years. You know, not the method. The method came easy. and I, But the, the actual routining and the structure and uh, all the movement for it, that was, that was the hardest bit. Because some effects are really method driven. I always think that the can effect... The best thing about it is the method. Um, obviously, I like the effect, but I think the method is much better than the effect. Where I think that this particular effect has a great method, but it also is a great trick as well. Cool. All right. Uh, it's it, it's definitely interesting for me as a creator to understand how that process works for different people because we're all doing the same thing. We're all inventing magic. But we all look at it or come at it from a different angle, so that's always a uh, a fun question for sure. So. I, I think the other thing is, and and this isn't taking away from anyone that creates, because uh, I I believe that you know a lot of people will they'll say oh YouTube magic or whatever. I personally think if you've developed them for YouTube magic or Instagram, that's amazing, and I, I, hats off to you. I personally couldn't create for that medium. Yeah, that is not my strength. I am not a strong enough creator. But where I am strong enough is to create stuff that works in a real environment even if it's impossible because that's where i that's where i spend most of my time mm -hmm. i'm still trying to figure out facebook half the time um and catch <laughs> up with technology but i i you know i'm working in the field and i do it, it, each effect has had thousands of miles and stuff on it you know right. now you can tell um, i mean honestly that's not just me saying that but there are certain people and i've mentioned different names over the last few months i've done the show uh, that when you hear their name, you know that they're a worker. You, like a Gregory Wilson, when you hear Greg's name, you know the stuff he's putting out is like worker stuff. Or, uh, yeah. or a Richard Sanders, or even like a yeah. Yegal Masika. You know this is like the type of stuff that's been worked, that's been tested, and that there's a high quality there. And I would definitely put your name into the mix of those type of people. Where well, it's a good name to be in. I, I, good to be with those particular. Well, I saw most of those guys lecture sure. when I was younger, so it's uh, yeah, it's weird being in up there with those people. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's true. I yeah, thank you. And 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 you know, I don't think being a worker is the end all. Because let's face it, not magic isn't all about working and doing gigs. It's about doing magic and enjoying people. Yeah, and yeah. and performing. And whether you did this in the pub or some from friends or some. But, uh, you, you know, you just want to do this at school. You know, it's still a great piece of magic. Um, I mean, it, it is a working effect. I will, you know, it's, it, it's designed to be a working effect. But I feel like it would work for anyone, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, for the people that are going to be at Blackpool, is this something that you're going to be demoing at your, at your booth? Yeah. Yep, 100%. Uh, we will be demoing next weekend. Perfect. Um, All right. So come and see it. Uh, as Mark keeps saying, come and see the impossible. It feels a bit cheesy, but just come and see it and ask me and chat. You know, I will always be honest with you. I would never force you to buy something that I didn't think you, you do because you know I, I'm not meant to talk about this. Mark always tells me off, but it is tough times at the moment with economics and things. Yeah. Um, and I think you really have to think about what you're going to buy in magic, and it's easy to get swept up. Uh, I get swept up um, in, in magic, and I think you have to think to yourself deep down. 
is this a piece of magic I'm going to do? Can I see myself doing this? Because mm-hmm. you don't want to... I, I think as a creator, the worst thing I, I, I could have is know that you bought it and then stuck it in the drawer. I want you to buy it. I know you're going to use it. Yeah. And I know that sounds weird. For me, you know, I, I hate the cliche, it's not about the money, but for me, the joy is chatting to someone saying, I used your idea and it was amazing. Or, you know, yeah, I used your idea and they went nuts. Or, you know, that's what I like about magic. Yeah. Uh, Tom Rose over on YouTube saying uh, he can't wait to see you over at the Ruskin. So there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I have my. I've got a few things planned for the Ruskin as always. I always uh, try and have something new each year for that. All right, you're a cheeky man. You're you're always up to something. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally it's like, Karen, can you swallow a coin? Karen, can you swallow a coin? Uh, so, um, uh, yeah. so maybe maybe not so much this year because I'll just like, no, I'll do something else. Let me, I can, I'll do something else. Um, and you guys again watching live right now, uh, both on uh, Facebook and over on YouTube. Don't forget, we are live right now with Kieran. We'll probably be on with him for about another 15, 20 minutes. So if you have questions about Ice Cube. Any of the details that you're on the fence about, I wonder if this can work or can I do that? This is now your chance to get those questions answered by the man himself. So uh, feel free to post those in the comments section now. Um, Kieran, what would you say based on, we've gone through quite a few questions already. Do you have any popular questions that keep popping up that you think, all right, this is something I want people to know that this is the truth or this isn't the case or something like that? I think mainly the, the 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 biggest question is people say it can't be that clean. Mm-hmm. You can't show all those sides, and I think I think I, I think um, I think it's hard because when you create an idea, it's almost like having a baby. You know, for me, you know, I always think of magic uh, as this new thing that you birth into the world or a conceptual idea. So I think when you tell someone something and they're they're saying it's not possible. Uh, I think I, I think it's a good sign actually when a magician says that's not possible mm-hmm. because it, it, I, I think it proves well I doubt that it's um, that's an effect uh, for for people because if that's what they're thinking what's a normal person thinking yeah. you know and, and I think the other question is is it practical I, I you know and again I have um, theories on that I, I you know my my friend Noel always says Kieran you're not you're not to make it um, like no one's going to do that stuff. It's not practical. And when it is practical, you just got to be in that right mind. Any, any magic, you know, learning how to do a uh, one handed top hand palm that takes what hours, 20 hours. And then to get it looking good and yeah. then get it to a point where it looks good. If you think about that, that's not a practical thing, but it is because you want to do it. So you, you spent 50 hours getting good at it. This is the same with the ice. You just spend a lot of time preparing it. No. But I know when I'm preparing the ice, when I'm getting it ready, I know that all that hard work I've done, when I get to the gig, it's just easy. I just do a quick vanish, you know, and I get in, and it's it, it's 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 self working once I've done the hard work. Um, cool. So, but but again, it's this isn't for everyone. I wish it was, but in a way, I'm glad it isn't. You know, th- th- this is magic where you have to put effort in. But I always believe that if you want to be the best or stand out where you live. You have to put the hard work in because no one's going to give you anything. You have to, you have to just, you have to push. You know, um, yep. and that, you know that's what I did with the business because the business is, you know, pushing and creating and trying to be original and trying to get the right people to to notice. And I think that, that's the same. You know, because a lot of magicians they want to be famous or on telly and stuff, but it's, it's choosing the right material. And and I think this is the right material personally. I know for um, I know for a fact. That this particular effect ice cube is going to be performed to uh, Drake and uh, another uh, um, Jennifer Lopez uh, wow. in a few days. You know how cool is that? I won't be. I'm not performing. <laughs> I was about to ask. Um, but I wish I was. Yeah, no, not me. No, I, I just create stuff. But that's still pretty awesome that someone is going to be performing it to that. Right? They've gone. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm doing a gig for them. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this specially for them. And you know that he's gonna go like nuts over that you know so um and, and that, that you know that could be any of us really with, with performances but no no i don't get to put i i do get to be celebrities but i i've never met that All i right. think the highest i've ever been is uh, the spice girls that, that's the probably the most famous people i've ever met are you, are you the hidden the, spice girl kieran is that what that's called? oh I, I trust me i love the spice girls <laughs> I, I got to meet i got i got to meet do uh, magic for a, a music gig and i met uh emma bunton she called me a witch nice highlight of my career that <laughs> 
Uh, here's a question. You kind of answered this earlier. This one comes in from YouTube. Kevin, uh, or Kev G, uh, is asking, how often would you perform this at a working gig? I know you mentioned you do it, but, you know, is there, do you do it a number of times? Do you? I do it, I do it till I run out. There you go. I do it till I run out. I have a, I have a system. So, uh, if you know me, I, you know, I have my chocolate bar set up. I've got my lollies. I've got my, my stuff. I mean, I, I do do practical uh, resettable magic as well because believe it or not i do love classics i love coins across i do coins across all the time but um i stuff my pockets full of ice i do as much as i can and then i go back and i do that and i also do rubik's cube magic as well and I'm, I'm like you know I, I i i like the modern style as well cool. i i that's the one thing i enjoy about magic is that i can just i study as many styles of magic as i can cool. and i don't limit myself i think one of the, the the bad things, and I'm not again. It's nothing personally against attacking anyone, but what, one of the bad things I, I, I think is bad. It doesn't. You might not think it's bad. Is I meet a lot of magicians who go, yeah, I'm a mentalist, or I'm a card magician, or a coin magician, mm -hmm. and I always think to yourself, why should you? Don't put yourself in a label. Um, you know, because Gandalf, you know, Gandalf the magician. He if if he came to your table, it would be a bit weird because it'd be Gandalf. This is a weird analogy, but he could do sponge balls, read your mind, saw a lady in half. He could do illusions because Gandalf doesn't do magic. He is magic. Right. And I think that's, for me, I want to be magic. So if I want to unlock someone's pin on their phone and then do a sponge ball routine, then do um, do the ice and then do something else. Yeah, I don't think you should ever think, oh, that doesn't, you know, I can't do that style because I'm this. You, I right. think personally, as magicians, we should strive to be as magical as we can, well be said. making it fun, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do sponge balls followed by blockhead followed by, um, you know, <laughs> you know, because that's, that's me, you know, it's mad, it's eclectic and, and, and but obviously I wouldn't say be me, be who you are if you're a classic magician yeah. and that's, that suits you. But I, I also think that you, you probably wouldn't imagine me doing coins across, would you, Luke? Not so much. No, it doesn't really seem, no. it doesn't seem wild enough for you, Kieran. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do it because I absolutely adore the concept. I love it. And I, I, I slay with it, you know, because I, I made it, you know, I haven't added anything different to it. I just make it, you know, very fun. And um, I, I, and I think that, I, you know, and I do some classic card stuff sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. um, because, I, you know, I, I, I've, I've been known to do my normal stuff, then do a gambling demonstration, then do normal stuff. Because I, I think that, you know, with magic, you should just be able to go with how you feel and, the audience really here's a uh, a nice bit of word a few words for uh really nice words for you from chris corn who everyone here i'm sure is very <laughs> familiar with uh chris corn says uh in regards to putting in the work and helping yourself stand apart he says on facebook i completely agree putting the hard work in and the effort to do so something that most won't is what makes one stand apart and i agree completely with that and chris corn is a legend in his own right so i'm not surprised <laughs> that he's on the same hey, page chris. that you're in so <laughs> what well, he took me to dinner um, uh, at the session, which was very kind. And we met for the first time. Nice. He's a, a very, oh wait, trust me. I was like, oh my god, Chris Gordon. Yeah. Uh, you know, very nice man, and sure. I, he liked my uh, my my version of Ramsey Bean effect, which was really nice. Um, I mean, he said he liked all my stuff, which was nice. So, um, and, and you know, it's nice when someone like that can mm -hmm. can can see where you're coming from. Yeah, for sure. Um, here is. Um Another question. This one comes from YouTube. Uh, New Dimension. How do you decide a magic trick you made is deceptive enough to release? Um, that's a pretty good question there. So, it's a great question. I like that. I, I work it. Um, I can pretty much say, yeah, I can, yeah, I can safely say via probably one of my uh, effects free capped, which I did work, but probably not to the same level I worked everything else. But mo uh, every release I've had it's been worked thousands of hours. It's born in real world situation. It's born in in, in a real working situation. Um, and I and I and I think the thing is, you know, I will say this, and this is probably the weirdest thing I I, I got to say because I, I, hopefully magicians won't think I'm bad. Uh, my friend owns a magic bar and buff, and I'm very fortunately uh, he he lets you know he, I go and perform for him uh, every few months, and I do a. Um, seven hours in a, a brilliant bar, but one of the hardest um, environments, um, really hard environment. And I, I'll, I'll do my normal stuff, then I'll drop in some new pieces, but I tell them at the start, I'm here to do feedback. Um, and uh, um, I, I tell them I'm going to do some feedback 
And um, I, at the end, I asked them, I say, what did you think of this effect? What did you think the Love best it. thing about it? Or Love was it. there any weak parts to this? Is there anything you didn't like? I basically, I, I just get an audience and I ask them what they thought. Because if you don't do that, I do that on every effect. And I'll tell you what, uh, when I was doing an ice cube earlier on, when I, I had to learn, I, doing the handkerchief, the guy was like, yeah, no, I saw something in your hand. I went, great. Because if you didn't tell me that, um, the angle, I'm not going to get better. Um, and obviously then it got better and better and better. But he said, I don't know how I got the ice, though. That's just boggling his mind. <laughs> but, I, and I, and I, you know, a lot of magicians won't admit maybe that they it, it weakness. But how can I always think to be good, to be a great magician, you have to fail. Yes. Hundreds of times, thousands of times. And, you know, people will say to me, has it gone wrong? I go, yes. And went, it might go wrong now, but I'll tell you what, you'll never know. Because I think part of being a professional magician or just being a magician or just being an amateur magician or just being a magician, it, it, it's just rolling with the punches. I mean, that's one of the, the greatest things about being being a, mm-hmm. uh, a mag- magician. You, do, you, you should be open to any experience, really. Yep. And you can't get better without those real life lessons no. and that it comes from failing and having things mess up and that's the only way you get yeah. better so get, get ready you, for you it you know <laughs> I, st- I started off on the streets you know not streets as in uh performing like with, with busking but as in just walking around the streets and the pubs doing magic and you know that's how i started my career as a magician just for fun doing that and then i got a job at the bar and you learn pretty quickly what works and what doesn't work you have to be honest with yourself mm-hmm. um and you know, a lot of people say to me, "How do how, how you get, you know, how do you get performance time?" I'm like, "Just go out, go to the pubs, or obviously, if you're not old enough, go to the streets. Go, go, you know, obviously, be safe, but go somewhere where you can perform and just, you know, this this is something interesting. Someone once told someone once told me, he said, you know, sometimes you're going to get that you're the best magician, the TV mo- the magician. You should be on TV. You're so brilliant. I'm sure all of us have had it. But he says, you take that moment, you put that in your back pocket." Um, wise words really and when you have that bad moment when it's not going so well you can take out that moment and go I was brilliant the other day and then you can move on mm-hmm. I think one of the nicest things about being a close up magician and one of the worst things is you can walk to a table be amazing walk to another table it doesn't go as well go to another te- table um, one of the scary things recently is moving to stage which I've been making the transition and I tell you what when it, it's harder there because if it doesn't work there's no you can't walk to the next table but um, mm-hmm. but be, you know, doing close up magic, doing parlor does does prepare you slightly for that. But I, I think I, I've realised actually recently, being a close up magician does give you the false security when you when you're putting it all on the line. Yeah, going off for one there. Right. Cool. Um, let's see. I have another. Uh, oh, actually, this is a comment. Uh, Kieran, this comes in from YouTube. Uh, this comment comes from Magic JJ. He says, Kieran. Uh, saw you uh, for, uh, saw you, Kieran first at this year's session, and I love your fork bending routine. So, a little love for you over on YouTube, Kieran. That's cool. That's cool. Thank uh, you. I think that that I I wasn't going to do my I never got to explain it properly. The the reason I did that um, at the session was because Banachek was in the room and I saw him, and I had them with me, and I went uh, I, I I I want him to see it. I want him to see it. You know, I, I you know he's going to probably go. 90% of that stuff's my ideas with one or two of your <laughs> concepts. But I did it. And uh, one of the nice things is um, when he came up to me and said, uh, one of the most original presentations I've seen in a while. And he, he said, I like it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. There you so, go. <laughs> thank you. That, cool. That's very kind of you to say that. Um, here's a question that keeps popping up. And, and Kieran, I'm, I'm not too sure how to, how to answer this. I'm going to pop it up here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pop it up here on the screen so we can all see it. Uh, this comes in over on uh, the Facebook. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one comes from Ido, and he says, can we use something else than an ice cube? Uh, that one confuses me because that's kind of like the crux of this trick is that something well, appears I, in an ice I, cube. So. I, I, know, I know where he's coming from. Okay. I mean, can you use it up? Uh, 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 so, let, you know, impossible object is a very old concept. Um, I, f- I think from my research, like an impossible object goes back to 17th century. So, you know, if uh, there's fruit, there's all kinds of things you can use. Um, you could use eggs. I mean, it's, it's so difficult because that is a hard question. So one of my other favorite po- possible locations is I do a corner card into chocolate bar, which I love doing, which is great. I, I love impossible location. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think um, 
my, the best thing is is if you if you if if you are interested in some other ideas for impossible location, add me on Facebook, peer me, and we can have a chat personally, cool. and I you know can put you put you in some of the right things because yeah. it, the, the, I, I the reason I like heists is because I think I, I've uh, the the two most impossible locations to me in my mind are either ice or an egg mm -hmm. because there's something crazy about an egg and there's something crazy about the ice and I would say if you're into the egg uh, check out Nefkesh she has a wonderful coin in egg if you have white eggs in your country if you don't have white eggs check out Mark Tra uh, Travisoni's Inexplicable which has got a card and bill in egg obviously not trying to upsell you that but also you could check out uh, the Magical Maximilini which has a, a, a bill in uh, egg in there as well a, a lemon that's stuff. something I'm actually uh, that's a name that I'm glad that you mentioned Kieran because that you know we have a lot of younger viewers and Max Molini is still recognized among magicians because of what did he do that everyone references back to? You, you know, well, what he produced about. dice. Exactly. He produced dice. Exactly. First, first, well, yeah. he's, he, I think he's he's. So this is the interesting thing I found about ice magic. So I'll, I'll tell the story and then I'll okay. tell you some more more research I said. So if you don't know who Max Molini is, go get the book. It's like fifteen twenty quid. Die Vernon wrote it, so you should get it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so they go pushing you into buying stuff. Oh, um, so Max Malini, he he's a legend. Um, if you ever seen like uh, there's some TV shows and you ever see a superhero called Max Malini, it's because of based on him. He was, was a magician that could walk in any town in the in the 19, early 19th century, uh, and and he could just walk into a theater. They give him the theater free, get the flowers for free, the program for free, and he'd make a fortune. Um, but one of the things he would do is he would produce ice. And um, from my research, apparently he only did it six times, but uh, Di Vernon and a few other magicians wanted to catch him out, uh, so they they were waiting for him for hours and hours. And there was even the waiter was a magician. They, they did, uh, uh, and they were waiting for him. And he finally did his coin under the hat, heads or tails, heads or tails, produces the ice, and the waiter drops the uh, drops the glasses because they just can't figure out where this ice is coming from because he waited for hours. <laughs> and that's the, the legend. Oh. Apparently, from research, he only ever performed it six times. I don't know oh. how true that is. Um, he also used to do a wonderful thing where he would walk up to someone and he would bite the button off and you see it <laughs> and then he put the button back on and, and that's it. That's in the book. That's a wicked idea. Right. I've never had the balls to do that myself. I've always, it's one of those effects that I've always wanted to do but just never done. I love it. And that's, and it, it is a testament again though to if you're willing to put in that extra little bit of effort, the memories, the legend that you become yeah. can stay with you. And actually this is uh, something that came up on Facebook I want to mention as well. Uh, our buddy uh, D Hood mentions uh, it was an extension of what Chris Korn said. Uh, D says, um, "Let me just pull this back up." Uh, in a continuation of what Mr. Korn said, it's a great fun to be in the moment when everyone is giving high praise for your magic. When the hours and hours of repetitive work at home, yeah. when you perfect an effect, becomes uh, fun, you have grown in magic. Uh, I really like those words a lot, and uh, it's, it's lovely. I mean, yeah. I think I, you know, I. One of the joys for me is prep. I love prep work. I, I you know, I, I can I'm smiling to myself because I know how good these effects are, and and I, know, I and you know, I, I, you know, as in their words, you know, it's worth it. You got to think to yourself: Do you want to be just a normal magician, or do you want to be the guy that did the impossible? Yeah. And that's not just to saying that with my effect. That's with any effect that takes work. You know, I, I think it is easy to become lazy in, in magic and it's not lazy because you can be technically gifted yeah. but uh, um I, I i think it's hard so i'm trying to do it without insulting people but i think whether you do this trick or not trick you know you should always go to the as much effort as you can for magic i mean personally i am I'm obsessed i live on sleep magic i mean my life is my my son my wife magic 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 <laughs> so um you know, maybe, maybe you have a bit more of a life than i do you have other interests <laughs> no you would never do that it's magic 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 24 <laughs> 7 right well yeah. i do like gaming as well i like um, i'm looking forward to the nintendo switch so uh, son that's pretty cool. wife computer gaming and uh magic but you know i've dedicated my my whole life to this art you know well the last 11 years of my life to this art and i and i love it you know i just think it's um it's just such a wonderful professional to be in and and it can be difficult because you're on your own sometimes performing and and it can be hard and there's going to be moments for all of you where you just go why and there's going to be other moments where it's just like amazing and i think 
I, I, and that's why I always think when people say it's magic and art, it is because for that brief moment, you did something that's going to last in someone's memory, you know, and it is t a tough business and it's going to be hard. You'd be thinking, why am I doing this? I've got to make, I've got to make my mortgage. I've got to make my rent this month. Why did I not get a normal job? But there's going to be other moments where you're going to just go, I just love this, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and for the guys that don't know, what was the thing that got you hooked on the bug uh however many moons ago that was you and i have had this uh, chat before but like what yeah, was, no, what was cool. it so well as you know it was uh so i was i, I went to a magic shop with my friend david i had no interest in magic personally i i, I just i didn't get it um i just i never seen magic really properly um but the effect that just I don't know. It did something to me. It was cartoon, and I, I think that effect ha is responsible for a lot, isn't it? Really, in the world, that particular effect. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what it was about that effect, but it just made me love magic. And I think also the the experience was strange because there was this old man going, "You should put a nail up your nose. I could see you doing that." And I'm like, weird thing to say to someone. <laughs> also, it came true. <laughs> like in. You know, I, I do that kind of stuff. So yeah. um, I, it was always weird. But um, yeah, cartoon just uh, took, took you know, You had a jacket. Out, right? You and I have talked. You have a jacket, uh, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I know about the jacket. <laughs> have I shown you it? Should you I have. I got it. You've, you've actually I'll, sent you sent me pictures the last time we talked. You sent me pictures uh, of the jacket. Let me see it. My wife wanted to throw it away. So I, I got obsessed with Stick Man. And let, let's see. Hopefully it's. Have you, but, but, by uh, the way, have you shown this to Dan Horlin? That's the big question. Uh, no, you know what? And I know Dan, so I should probably do that. Um, I don't know where it is at this moment in time. I'm just All trying right. to find it. But uh, let me see if I can find it. We are it. live it. right now in Kieran Johnson's closet, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure where it is, but it's it's around. Right. I actually have uh, I have this, which probably doesn't seem as impressive, um, which is a jacket. That's a jacket Rocco Solano gave me as a gift when I was in China with him this uh, last year. Oh, cool. So I actually cool. have a... A jacket owned by Rocco Solano. Is it? Let me ask you this, and I don't know if you can even tell me. Is it in any way, shape, or form altered for sleeving? Because I'm curious about that. It is better for sleeving. Yeah, Josh J asked me the exact same question, and he right. was jealous. He's like, "Oh, I want a jacket for Rocco." I know, right? <laughs> he collects stuff. I'm like, because obviously, if anyone uh, doesn't know, Rocco was my mentor, or still is my mentor. Yeah. I'm always learning from that man. And the highlight of my career last year was I got to open up for him for China. So. I was the, the third act on, and he was the last act on, and I got to go on before him. And then um, I did another show where he wasn't performing, and I was with Josh Jay and a, a man called Victor and a, a Chinese guy called Lee. And um, I was uh, got to perform, and I was on second after Josh Jay, which is not an easy place to be. A uh, great magician. And uh, I got to wear that jacket on stage, and he got to see me. Uh, cool. Slay the audience, really. So boom. That's a, but uh, yeah, I'll find I'll find it and put some pictures on. Right. Okay. My wife might have moved it upstairs because she's been wanting to throw it away. But if it's got sleeves on the arm, it's got fire on the arms, both sides. It's got a stick man on there holding cards. It's got oh, yeah. death on the back, going. There is no justice. It's just me, which is a Terry Pratchett quote from uh, <laughs> his books. And it's holding aces and eights, dead man's hand. Love it. And uh, Love I it. thought that was cool. Yeah, I used to wear that to gigs. <laughs> emphasis on used to but okay <laughs> <laughs> so Kieran I want to ask you uh, one or two last questions and I'm going to let you get out of here because I, I know you told me you had about an hour to do the interview and we're pushing that really really close right now um, quick question from me to you and this is something that as someone that's in the same kind of age range I'm in the, the youth of magic the young guys that are out there I know we have a lot of young viewers um, and there's going to be a lot of people that watch this afterwards uh, as an on demand but general advice that you might have for people that are either just getting into this stuff or people that are kind of in that beginner stage, just some advice from someone like yourself. You're a professional, you're a creator, you're someone a lot of people also look up to now. So, yeah. you know, any, any advice that you could share, stick man jacket, um, <laughs> guys, what would you share to some of those people out there that are watching? Well, my advice is this, uh, it would be don't listen to anyone, um, but listen to everyone. I know that sounds cryptic, but um, what, I, what I mean by that is listen, um, take what you want, but don't, if someone says to you, don't do that trick, but you like it, do that effect. If they say don't do that, but you like it, you, I think you have to be true to yourself mm -hmm. and um, true 
to 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 who you are within magic mm-hmm. you know I, it's hard because we get swept up and you see someone do a trick you want to do that trick um i don't think that you know necessarily that that might be um it, it might just um it, sorry i've got loads of messages coming up but i'm trying to get into the moment um i think we, we it's, it's very hard i think one the, the thing is with magic is it's it is hard you, you're going to have moments where it's brilliant and it's easy and it's hard but you have to stick with it and you have to figure out who you are mm-hmm. don't you know a lot of people say oh, what character are you some people tell you that you should only learn for five tricks other people you know but i think you have to just do what's right for you so ultimately listen to people but take what you need for yourself i hope that doesn't sound selfish but sure and, and also just you know it is you know it might be an easy road it might be a hard road but push and and just keep keep going that that's the only thing i saying. and if you know my story you'll know that i came from nothing you know I, I i didn't have much money i was struggling and i i pushed and i pushed and pushed and pushed i've been very lucky as well had a lot of luck in the business as well as you know people liking my work i can be a bit crazy but um I think you just have to figure out who you are and just be, be true to yourself is the easiest yeah. thing, you know, uh, and being, being, making sensible choices because, um, with things, I don't know if that, any of no, that. No, that's good. Helps. I think, I think the core yeah. of it, which is something I believe in too, is to be genuine because people can yeah. tell when you're being genuine or not as a performer, they can sniff it out a mile away. So, yeah, I, I, I think you should just be yourself. I mean, yeah. some people are good at, good at being characters, but when I'm on stage, I'm me. When I'm here, I'm me. The me you'll meet in Blackpool or anywhere, if we're ever in any world, will be the same me on stage. Right. Um, and that might not be for you. That might not suit you. You you might have to be someone else for it to work for you. It, it it's it's difficult. I think some people think say to me, you know, oh, you're always in character, I'm like, and I'm just myself. Well, that's got be an act I'm like, no, I'm just myself I, I, I could say be yourself but what does that mean anyway one of the things that I used to get is uh, people say you know be yourself you have to be yourself what does that mean like uh, one of the things I realized is when I was just comfortable just being me and not worrying about trying to be myself or figuring out my life in five years things happened for me and one of the things I found quite funny is other people used to ask me who I was and I just go I'm me and they were like but who are you <laughs> that's like, that it's me right. and, and I get this Matt Garrett and the rest is shaking me like are you the man in a hat are you Karen Johnson are you Karen Lefever who are you I'm like I'm just me but what does that mean <laughs> dude I struggled with that for like my whole life and like welcome to the world of yeah. and, and I think you just have to just uh, it, it sounds cheesy doesn't it like but huh. I, I think it's surround yourself with good people people that you love and yeah. um, also just you know if you are in a relationship or you know relationship with someone you have to you know don't be magic obsessed at all you know, you don't want to push people uh, away too much. It's, it's it's moderation. Uh, here's I'm going to wrap up this with this question. Yeah. It's something I've never asked you about, and right. uh, it comes in from YouTube. Uh, our YouTube friend over here, uh, Atharva Gore. You've had some good questions, Atharva. Thanks for those today. Um, what do you think about magic getting exposed on YouTube? That's a pretty big question, and that's what we're going to wrap up this week's episode on. And Kieran, I'd love to hear your thoughts on exposure on YouTube. Um. It's difficult, isn't it? That is a difficult question. Mm-hmm. Because, because actually, I, I, how I feel about YouTube magic is if that gives people pleasure and they do that, that's fine with me because it won't affect you in the real world. I mean, what's the what's the worst thing that can happen to you at a gig? The worst thing you could happen is you do a trick, someone loves it, they go on YouTube to tell you what done. The only way you give that person power is by going, oh my God, oh my God, you give them power. Where you go, yeah, cool, man. Well done. Don't give people power. Mm-hmm. That that's the easiest way. Well, if so. someone says, "I know how you trick," you go, "Cool." So do I. Congratulations. <laughs> like what? What? They look. They only people will only say this to get a reaction from you because they wanna. They wanna get you know panic you. But the best way, if someone said to me, "I know how that's done," I go, "Cool. Nice to meet you." <laughs> Move on. Yo, Pat them on the back. Soon, Good job. Good soon job. They, <laughs> soon, as soon as you shake their hand and go, "Yeah, well done," give them a hug. They don't know what to do because yeah. they're like, you, you know. So I. My advice is, if people want to expose stuff on YouTube, I personally do not endorse this. I don't agree with it. It it does annoy me slightly. But what I have to think about is I have to think about there might be someone from another country, not necessarily England, from somewhere in the world, doesn't have much, goes on there, goes on to be the next big thing, Mm. and all because of YouTube. So personally, it hasn't done that for me, but it doesn't mean that that won't do that for someone else. You have to think that the people... 
magic will find you if, if you're destined. Oh, this sounds weird, but destined for it. And that person might find magic for YouTube and they might go on to create. And, mm. you know, it's, it's difficult because I think as, as, as much as I'm not a big fan of it, it might change someone's life. It might give them the magic bird. It might spread. Never that know. might do good things. So you don't know. So you can't be yeah. anti it because you don't know what good it might do. In every bad thing, there's always something good that can come from. What's that? What's that? So, right. so personally, I wouldn't worry about it. And if anyone says to you, I know how your trick done, don't panic, don't stress, go, me too, well done, move on, walk away, do another trick, yeah. whatever. Doesn't matter, does it? No one dies if you do a magic trick. You're not being like, chased. And I always used to hate that saying, you're not being chased, but it's true. Like, I make a mistake. I say I do a double lift and I split the cards and I go, I saw that. I go, great. The worst thing that ever happened to me is I was doing a coin trick and I, you know, I was doing magnets, and then I had it. And what happened is the coin kind of went towards me, but I caught it. Anyway, I gave the guy the coin, and he chucked the coin at me. Uh. <laughs> and it stuck to me. And I yeah, I could have gone and panicked. And I just, I, they all wow. laughed, and I carried wow. on. And I did some always more amazing things. And I started talking about when I was a kid, I got electrocuted, and it's given me this power of magnets thing. And I, things stick to me now. Wow. In fact, actually, let, let me show you something that happened to me. And then I bent Mel. And I did the metal bending. Love and they're like, but how's that work with magnets? And then I did the coins. I went, yeah, because of the magnetic energy. Um, it's, it, and I turned it around. And they're like, oh, and then I want to know what the way the guy went. Yeah, he wanted you to do that so he could do that story. <laughs> so I think, I think it's got to be looking to flip things in their, their, their head. Things will go wrong. Things yeah. will go right, as I've said. Uh, I, I, how did we get off on this tangent? I don't know, it was just talking about, you know, talking about <laughs> you know YouTube and other stuff. And I, actually, I do have one last question. This is one I'd okay. like I'd like to have you answer. If you, do you have another minute? Okay. Yeah, of course. I've got plenty of time. Okay. Really. Uh, this one comes in from Facebook, and I, I like this one a lot. Um, this one comes from our buddy uh, Daniel. Daniel says, "Hello, Kieran. Sometimes in magic, coinc coincidences happen that cause magical moments in of themselves." Do you have any stories where crazy coincidences created an amazing magical moment for you? Yeah, so I, I, I'll tell you a wicked story um, about quit magic. So one of the things I really believe in, I believe in free magic. That, um, and I, what I mean by free magic is that magic is everywhere to happen. I mean, how, have you ever had that situation? I remember being at a magic bar once, and the guy says, I want the free clubs, picks my car, shuffles them, says, if this is the free clubs, you're the best magician I've seen. Free clubs, everyone screams. I go, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, being great audience, good night. Mm -hmm. I can't follow that. Um, but the, the first time I, I, I saw, I experienced random magic, because it's all talking about we experienced it, but I actually saw, I was in a, I was a witness to a moment of pure magic. And this was, I met Rocco um, at Southport Magic Convention at the IBM, and he was very kind to me. And we in the bar, and he bought me a drink. And there's a few people talking around, um, around him, and not, you know, some people knew him. And there's a guy being a bit disrespectful, but that's fine, you know, that that happens. Anyway, next thing you know, Rocco's doing this, and mm. then a can on the table starts to move, and then it flips off the table into a bin, and I just, everyone just went nuts, and we sat down, and I asked him, how how did how did you do that? Like he <laughs> said, if you look around, Kieran, magic, free magic is is everywhere. Love it's it. everywhere love it, love it. And, and he said go back to the bar and i went cool and i i asked the guy if i could have the can from the bin um and i put the thing on the table and i noticed that the table was wet and what happened <laughs> is the fan was going on rocco <laughs> saw this happening made the pose did the rocco thing and it just so happened he got lucky it flipped into the bin That's but it. he That's he it. saw something happening and he took it now this this is the better this is my favorite part of the story fast forward 10 years on we're in um uh, I was very fortunately, as I've mentioned before, to be in China. I'm in this hotel room, and there's this uh, wicked Chinese guy, I can't remember his name, doing a really lovely spoon band. And he one of the Americans he's go, Kieran, have you got any forks with you? And I just happened to have forks with me, because I think it was the first time I carried them with me, because I wanted to do it for Rocco, but I always get nervous performing magic in front of such big stars, so I just never did it, and I let everyone else do magic. And um, I said, I do have them, but obviously he's, he's done that, I don't want to seem like I'm taking over because I, I always just like watching magic. I don't really, I, I'm never trying to do the upmanship thing. I, it's not my style. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, they asked me to do it and I, I, I performed it. And there's this bit uh, where I took the, the fork and I'm doing the, 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 the band, the optical band. Anyway, um, I start doing this and everyone starts looking on the table and the fork in the glass is animating. <laughs> it's animating. And I did my 
thing. It went really well. Um, Rocco was so complimentary. It was uh, unbelievable. And uh, anyway, afterwards, he said, Kieran, I have to ask you, that thing with the in the glass where it was rocking back and forth, how did you do that? I couldn't see the string. And I said, Rocco, you just have to look. Magic is everywhere. <laughs> and, so and he cool. laughed. <laughs> uh, and uh, he, he said, what do you mean by that? What do you mean it's everywhere? I went, it was just moving. And I, I, no one was looking. So I just went like this. That's great, <laughs> and, he dude. Went, and he grabs me and his eyes pop and he shakes me. He goes, no, man. No. <laughs> like, because I was able to do for him what he did for me. That's I mean, great. how mad's that? Like, full circle. Like, what are the odds that that happened? I, and now that's part of my routine. I actually do that. Uh, but it's never been as good since. But I just saw it moving. It's because they were leaning into the table and they knocked the table because they were so engaged with my story uh -huh. that no one paid. And so when I went like that, they just went nuts. I love it, dude. That's a great story. I love it when the, the student becomes the master. That's pretty well, cool. no, def definitely. I'm kidding. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I know. I know. It's yeah. just that he, he yeah. he's incredible, incredible magician. Yeah. If you don't know who he is, look, the inventor of the delights, of course, but yeah. incredible performer. A very oh. nice man as well. Yeah, very talented. He's a legend for sure. Yeah, um, yeah very kind. So, uh, Kieran, I think I think we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, we did yeah. chat a little longer than an hour, so I appreciate yeah. the, the extra time. Uh, we've had a lot of great friends pop on, had a lot of fun, and uh, hope you have a blast at Blackpool. Wish I was going to be there, but yeah. I've been there before, so I'll stay nice and warm here in Las Vegas while you freeze the yeah. butt off over there. Well, so. <laughs> well it's, it's perfect for ice cube magic, isn't it? This is true. Oh. Couldn't be a better place, right? Almost. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it could, uh, could be better. Uh, um, but, uh, Kieran, before I let you go, do you have any last things you want to say? If anyone wants to come see you at Blackpool, any other details? The floor is yours for yeah, the next um, few uh, seconds here, so go for it. C come see me at Blackpool, PM me. You know, if I, 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 you know I'll try and get everyone as much time as I can. I'm about to go to my mother-in-law's for dinner in a minute. So oh, okay, cool. if you DP on me, I'll do my best to get back. But yeah, yeah just come come see us. And uh, you know, don't feel you have to come just to buy magic. Just come and say hello in yeah. the bar. I've, I've always got time for anyone. So come ask me some questions or whatever. Or if there's something you think I can help you with, ask me in the bar. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Well, well we are going to say goodbye to Kieran Johnson, and I'm going to say goodbye to you guys in just a moment. I want to thank you all for tuning in for this unexpected live Q&A all about Ice Cube from Mr. Kieran Johnson and Mark Traversoni. Very good stuff. Check it out at Blackpool. It is available as of today. We are uh, February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. Uh, available now from your favorite dealer. So if you want to pick up Ice Cube, you can do that now. Uh, it is what we keep calling TV magic for the real world. You can grab that now. And uh, very excited for you to see it and to use it. We would love to see any clips that you guys have of you performing it. I'm sure Karen would love to see those too. So Ice Cube again, available now from your favorite magic dealer. And again, if you want to see it live, check it out at Blackpool. If you're going, I'm jealous, but have fun. That's the most important thing. If you guys are out there traveling to Blackpool, safe travels, have a good time. And I uh, hope you see lots and lots of good magic. So don't forget, we are back live again this Wednesday at noon Pacific time for this week's live hangout. If you've never joined us before, we do these each and every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. Uh, we stream live on the Murphy's YouTube channel and Facebook page and some other places too, uh, where I show off more of your magic clips, give you guys chances to win free magic, and I sometimes have a jam cam set up where I teach you some magic along the way too. Those again happen each, each and every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. That is 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, I think in the UK, that's 8 p.m. Uh, in the evening over there so you guys can kick back and relax and enjoy the live hangout uh, but that wraps us up for today and uh, thanks again to Mr. Kieran Johns for coming on I really appreciate his time I appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, we will catch you guys again live this Wednesday for the next hangout but in the meantime get practicing get working and get performing and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side see ya